let's get good. I am the Gamer Under Development, and this is Endless Space 2. We are playing as the soul-sucking virtual saints, the Vodiani. In our last episode, we tried to take our new arc and move it over here to Weirix to prevent colonization by this faction right here, which I believe is the Riftborn. Yeah, that is the Riftborn. So we tried to take Weirix from the Riftborn by settling an arc there. However, we got blockaded and intercepted here on Gaina, where we destroyed one of the Lumeris fleets. However, we're going to be sending this guy up to Nihal, where they will settle in and begin to proliferate. And then once that's done, folks, we go into war. And I'm not normally a warlike person, but the fact that they intercepted us and kind of messed us up there, that's a problem for me. So we've got a full cardboard fleet here ready to go. We're going to send them over to the pirates right away. As soon as they get here, we can begin moving our siege. Actually, we might as well move it now. I'm going to get the siege fleet out and move it that way as well. So our combat fleet is going to kill anything in space. Our siege fleet is then going to siege this place down. And once we're done, since we already have a combat fleet and a siege fleet, we might as well send them over here to raise some heck. What are you? Lumeris Caravel in our space. Definitely not the best place for you to be right now. Definitely not. Uh, okay, so we do have the ability to scan down one more anomaly here in Wrath. Ooh. Hello, Voidstone. Wow, that's actually a really, really great resource for us right now. Uh, we do get some super spuds here as well. That's going to help. Going to go in here and check our population detail. We are currently boosting our pop already. Such amazing gains from the Vodiani population when you keep them boosted. That's something we should have been aiming to do more from the beginning of the game. Uh, I am, however, still learning to play this game a little bit better, and that's one of the things that I personally need to improve on, is staying on top of that luxury resource boosting. Do, do, do. Okay, so that guy has done his explorations. Nihal has no anomalies left for us to explore. Pavo does, but I'm not as worried about that. Hmm. Could send him up here to get a better look at Yetix. Yetix is not a bad system necessarily, but we strongly suspect that the Umbral Choir is either here, here, or here. And the reason for that is that Yetix used to be a minor faction and they just disappeared. Uh, when they disappear like that, it means that they've been converted. However, since they don't show who they've been converted by, we can safely assume that they were converted by the Choir. Yeah, I think that's, that's what we're going to do here. Unfortunately, we weren't able to cut off Weirix. How long is left before Zaycor becomes a colony? Oh, four turns. How sad. I wonder what happens if we fly our Ark there and turn it into a system just to mess with them. Ah, good times, folks. Good times. We may end up doing that, too. I'm not entirely sure if that would... Yeah, so that would waste a turn before we were able to put our Ark down. I don't know if that's necessarily worth the, the effort or the hassle at that point. It may be better just to get over here to Nihal. I think that's probably just a better overall choice. It's sad that it's going to take us two turns to get there now, but... Either way, Nihal does have some antimatter available to us, so that'll be a nice resource for us to pick up. And it is a four-planet system. It looks like a heavily science system, so we'll probably try to specialize it towards that. That's another thing that, as a player, I'm trying to get better about doing, is being more specialized in how we build out our systems. Although you could definitely argue that I haven't done that so much so far because kind of everything that can be built has been built. Uh, still not a terrible way to play though, mind you. Gemini here has some potential. We should probably get a ship over to scan that soon. In fact, we may put one in queue right now. Let's actually go and take a look at the design of our exploration ship, the wheel. That's no longer our main combat vessel, so we can always retrofit it and do something different with it. Although, as we have learned in the past, we don't want to do that and retrofit it. What we'll do instead is we'll go ahead and make a scanner ship. I strongly, strongly wish that the uh, Leecher class ships could put probes on, but they cannot. Having probes on those would make a nice difference. So our scanner ship is going to be... Oh, do we already have a scanner ship? I have apparently already made a scanner. Yes, I have. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and... <laughs> Sorry guys, it's been a crazy, crazy week. Part of that is that I will be at PAX Prime later this week on Saturday for a panel with Amplitude Studio. And I am I am absolutely ecstatic about that. Like, I'm honestly, don't don't tell him this because he'll probably be like, I don't want to meet that guy now. But I'm super excited, excited to meet Jeff Spock because I'm, I'm a huge fan of his work narratively. Uh, okay, go ahead and end our turn there. 
Don't tell him that though. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen this in the past, but I got to interview Maxence Volu, one of the game designers, and I totally fanboyed out. And I would understand entirely if Jeff Spock was like, oh no, I don't want to meet that guy now. Uh, <laughs> okay. Whatever, whatever you guys want to do, yo, we, we can go. We can go. Uh, some more happiness on system is definitely a good thing. That's something we've been struggling with a little bit, and I believe he is the governor of Nair here. So that'll take us up to content, which is good enough for right now. We would like more happiness than that, but it'll do for the moment. Uh, we do have our scout fleet here, or our scanner fleet, ready to go. Let's go ahead and bring that scanner fleet out. Make sure that we have them selected, because I have a habit of not having the correct fleet selected when I click stuff. Two turns, he's going to get out there and be able to scan down Gemini. That's a pretty decent amount of time. Uh, and then with this ship, we can get here in one turn and prevent them from getting Zaycor, or we can get to Nihal in one turn and actually start... I, I think we're going to go here. I think we gain more economically if we just go ahead and make an arc here right now. And what we're going to do there is begin with Holy Proliferation, since we can. We'll follow that up with Drone Networks, and then we want to take a look at our planet layout and see what we've got here. Lots of sterols. So if we use Xeno Industrial, we're basically just going to get plus 10 per planet, which is still pretty good because we're on four planets, so that'll be 40 production right there. If we do this one, we're going to get even less because there's only one strategic resource and we can't technically gather it yet, so I don't think that it counts. So we'll go Xeno Industrial first, and then probably follow that up with a Cerebral Reality, and then get in some of our more basic upgrades like Happiness. Uh, more of the strategic resource we'll get later once we actually have access to it. But for right now, what we really want is stuff that's going to take advantage of these cold, sterile planets. So this will just give us, uh, what is it, 40? 40 science isn't great there. Don't have any anomalies, so this isn't necessarily phenomenal. Not exactly happy here, so that's not going to help too much. Man, I'm really not seeing the science benefit to being on these cold planets right now. Uh, I guess we'll do public-private partnerships to start with. Realistically, if we look at the science gains from this system, though, they're probably pretty high, comparably. Uh, actually, no, not really. That'll change, though, as our population goes up. We'll get a better idea of what this system is going to be useful for once we have full population here, which will not take very long, to be honest. Drain Essence module's been upgraded, as has All Must Provide. Now, what I'm not sure about, I believe that'll auto-upgrade all of our arcs, but I can't say 100% for sure, so I'm going to go take a look real quick. Uh, it does not look like that upgraded all of our arcs. That is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and upgrade the arc design and then go around upgrading all of our arcs. We needed to do this anyway because our arc that just settled was using the scavenge ram scoop modules to get there faster. So now he gets all must provide two in every support slot. We are going to have so much essence, guys. No, no, no. I don't want to lose the design. I want to keep the design and apply the design. Thank you, game. Uh, okay, so to upgrade that, 326 dust, that's not a lot of anything. 36 there, okay, yeah, now I feel much better. Now I feel much better. We're basically spending almost no dust, and our essence is going to go up a lot. Look at that, guys. Almost 800 essence per turn. We are basically scaling out on essence here. Considering that it costs us how much to Holy Proliferation? Let's see. Holy Proliferation is 125. We're making 800 per turn. We're basically going to be able to crank out another arc very, very soon. What is our next arc's cost? 1500. We could literally crank out another arc in two turns. Uh, and this is what we want to be doing. We want to be expanding at this rate. I do want to check our expansion. Okay, so we have plenty of room left on expansion as well. All of our laws are intact. Time to get the invading going on. Uh, this cheap heat fleet is using primarily lasers. They're strong at medium range. So what we're going to do is try to draw these guys into medium range. They are much stronger at long range, though. So I suspect, well, they're okay. They're, they have a mixed range profile here and a slightly mixed damage profile. No, they're all projectiles. Okay, so since they're all projectiles, we can look at hull plating boost right here, which is great because it'll take us into short range, which means that if they choose medium or long, we'll still be closer than we would be if we took something at a slightly longer range. And we get plus 25% hull plating, which is really nice because uh, that'll reinforce our projectile defenses, which are sadly lower than they probably should be. Yeah, that'll be fine. Go guys, get them. 
I mean, we also have a massive numbers advantage and a wing advantage, so we should get like a morale bonus when we attack. This is probably going to be just a straight up victory if it decides to process. Oh, there we go. Decisive victory. Yeah, we just wrecked them. They did a little bit of damage to one of our cardboard ships, and that's about it. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Our invasion ships will get there very soon, and then we will just wear them down quickly. Uh, it may actually be worthwhile. Oh, yeah, no, we, we don't want to fight you guys. Oh, wait, what's the health like on that leecher? It's just above half right now, so it may actually survive this retreat, but probably not. Yeah, that's, that's to be expected. That was just one of our wild leechers that was out in nature sort of exploring. Uh, we need one more system into Canna to get the 15% influence bonus. So our next arc is probably going to come over here to Columba. And I do want to take a look at our luxury resource situation and see if we're generating enough of anything to be able to make it a system resource. It doesn't really look like it yet. Like we don't have a lot of Decidious trees yet, but we could improve that by getting this, which will add... Oh, wow. Wait, no, I, I have to be confused about this, right? No, that's six. That's six per turn right there. And how many would this add? Three. Now, if we were able to come over here and take these systems, we'd also be getting super spuds in the region of an additional 4.5 there and an additional three there. Pavo here has 4.5. Oh, wow. Okay, guys, so yeah, we're, we're going to definitely be working on expanding our luxury resource gains here over time. Yo, what are you? Oh, you're just a caravel. We're not worried about you. Okay, so that's definitely something we want to be zoning in on is getting more luxury resources. To that note, I think we're going to wait here with this guy to finish scanning down Wrath. But once he's done there, I might send him over here to Pavo just to see what else we can find in that system. It does only have two planets, which makes it less appetizing overall. However, if it's going to give us a lot of those luxury resources, allow us to boost our pop and begin to build our economic upgrades, which will give us more population on each arc, that's not actually a bad thing. I'm going to actually go to the marketplace here for a minute and see how much the Decidious trees are. Boy, they're 80. That's that's quite a bit. That's quite a bit more than we actually want to spend on them, so we'll wait. Although realistically, right now, if we wanted to, we could sell a bunch of titanium. Uh, whoops, I don't want to buy. What am I doing? I want to sell. Okay, so we could sell a bunch of titanium. We have a ridiculous amount of it. So if we were to say sell 46 titanium to bring us down to 100. Okay, now we've only got 100 titanium, but we've got 5k money to work with. Now, the question is, how many Decidious trees could that get us? Uh, the answer's a lot. The answer's a whole lot. So doing this would allow us to upgrade at least two arcs. I think I'm okay with that. I think I am definitely okay with that, and the arcs we're going to upgrade are obviously going to be the ones that give us the most oomph. And at this point, Nair is definitely one of those arcs. And I think that Wrath or Nihal is going to be the other. Our actual home system arc doesn't have four planets yet, which is somewhat problematic. Uh, it may be worthwhile looking specifically into research that's going to allow us access to those. However, right now we're working on mission flexibility so that we can get the better Regional Government Bureau support module, which will give us more FIDS gains from this behemoth. Uh, so right now I'll probably do one on Nair. Oh, we've got to actually go set it first. That would actually help. Bam. Okay, so it's going to cost us 20 Dacidious Trees to do this. And I think we may actually have enough to do three systems then. Let's see. If it's 20, and how many do we have? 79. We're actually one away from having enough to do four systems, so we're kind of great right now. Let's do level 2 modernization pretty much everywhere. And then next turn we will do it in whatever system was not done this turn. Uh, all right. Gaina was successfully hacked. So what we want to do with this... And we have some more probes, that's fine. Whoa, battle at Mikre. Oh, okay, you guys want to fight again? This didn't work out so well for you last time, but we'll kill you again, no problem. Uh, it might... 
Hmm. I'm going to do one thing here. I'm going to go into advanced, and this is something you should definitely keep in mind. We know that last time we did this, this ship took a lot of damage, the one in the middle. So I'm actually going to move it out and move this other one that's at full health into its place. Because provided it takes the same amount of damage, this one will then stay alive, and this one will eat some of the damage for it. And we're just going to let that fight happen. Should get a nice decisive victory there. Yup, and both of our cardboard ships have taken some damage, but neither one is dead yet. So we managed to basically buy ourselves a little more time on that fleet. And now our invasion fleet is here, and as you can see, we're now doing 134 manpower damage per turn. Means it's still going to take us quite a few turns. We should probably actually build out some more siege ships. We only had four in that fleet. So I'd like to get another three. But we can put those in queue here, or potentially in our capital. I think they're better in queue here, and they'll take a little bit to get out, but that's okay. Now, as far as... Oh, Wrath has been compromised. Yeah, so I'm very, very sure that the Umbral Choir is over here. Uh, I thought that we put some defensive programs on over here, but it doesn't look like we did. Hmm. So I'm going to put that because we don't want any back doors here. And then... We can also do Encrypt here, which is a good idea, I think. So now we have two different defenses running here. We are using most of our bandwidth allocation at this point, but I think that's really the best option we have because we know that the choir is up here somewhere and they hack really, really well. So we get rid of that. Uh, we did not win 10 battles first, unfortunately. Do have some more probes ready here, so let's go ahead and see what we can find in the remaining anomalies on Wrath. Come on, good stuffs. Actually, that is pretty good stuff. We got some more Voidstone. If we get enough Voidstone built up over time, we could actually use that as our next system resource upgrade uh, resource, and that would give us a ton of extra production. That would just be massively useful, in my opinion. Okay, so coming over here, we now have the ability to do a level 2 modernization here, but we don't want to do it just yet because we still need to wholly proliferate one more time first. However, if we come to all of our other systems now, we can take advantage of that additional holy proliferation because our population has increased by two. So now the fact that we're building a ton of essence is incredibly useful because we're scaling up on every system that we have. Uh, it still becomes a priority for us on this system. Wow, we actually burnt out of, of essence before we could do this system. Uh, it still becomes a priority for us, though, to get toxic planets. So we're going to go check our research and make sure that that is in queue if it is not already. Looks like Toxic's right there, so we'll go ahead and grab that. Hey, what do we get? Extra Void Stone's always nice. You should be out of probes now, but I think Wrath is also out of anomalies for us to scan down, so let's go over here to Pavo. More Vodiani population. Excellent. Look at all those level 2 modernizations, folks. That's a good sign right there. That is a very good sign. Uh, less than 10 Adamantian on the market with no demand change has led to increased prices. Do we have adamantium? We don't. If we had adamantium, I would go dump some of it right now to try to make a little extra money, but we don't need to at the moment. Man, that influx of Dasidious trees that we bought off the market is actually going to be a big, big difference maker for us in managing to get all of the systems upgraded. It's almost like it got us sort of ahead of the, the curve on Dasidious trees. We probably could have done that sooner, too. Like, I honestly should have tried to do that a lot sooner than we did it, but... You know, hindsight's 2020 there, so next time. Let's go ahead and scan down Gemini here and see what we can find. We can colonize all three of these planets, so we'll do the gas burning last. What you got on this ocean? Oh, come on. We want more anomalies or resources. Ooh, new event, dig deeper. The surface of this planet is tranquil, but a quick scan reveals that the ground under the surface is teeming with robots. Diligently working to transform the barren waste into fertile land. You have no idea who created them. It strikes you, however, that these robots can be put to good use on some of your less agriculturally inclined systems. Excellent. This was the sowers, I bet. That that actually makes sense, guys. This would kind of be a sowers thing. Plus five food per barren on or per population on barren when colonized system on Empire for 12 turns. Wow, that's actually really nice. So that would mean we'd get even more food if we decided to colonize here, because there are two barons. Uh, we are going to wait and go ahead and scan down. Why do we only have two probes on this ship? Oh, because, yeah, 
See, we maybe should have rebuilt our scanner design to have a few more probes. That's okay though, we're just gonna have this guy wait here to finish scanning that down. They will continue to control that system to keep our sieges safe. More deciduous trees. Okay, so that wasn't a bad pickup. Ooh, AM Fleet Accelerator, that's actually a really nice pickup for us. And for Gaina, our successful hack, we still haven't chosen what we want to do here. Embedding a sleeper wouldn't be terrible, but since we plan to attack and invade Gaina relatively soon, it may be more beneficial to create a backdoor and use it to hack other systems or to do something else of that nature. Jamming commands forces the target to use a unique detrimental ground battle play as defense on this system. That's something that would be really useful, but it'll be useful more later on. I think for right now it may actually be worth it to create a backdoor if we can rush a few hacks to these other systems and potentially establish some sleepers. So I think we're going to do that. Got a backdoor there now. Let's go ahead and take a look at our available hacking operations. And we're going to go from Gaina to... Hmm. We could jump through Nihal to make it a safer hack and then go to Weirix and that would let us hack the Riftborn. Or we could come over here, to here, to here. Actually, that's pretty good. That's only a five turn hack, meaning the hack should arrive before Zaycor becomes a system and can intercept it. And it could allow us to begin putting sleepers in Pleon or actually put a backdoor on Pleon so that we could hack Zaycor. There's a lot of things we can do with that and that makes me kind of want to use that option. Okay. I think we're done here. Yes, Invasion Fleet, you keep doing what you do. Uh, I do want to take one second to come look at this. We don't have access to tanks yet, that's something we should probably look into getting relatively soon. Uh, the tanks are available from the mobile energy weapons tech right here on autonomous construction. This will also give us a few more CP per hole type. Right now we currently have just four holes available to us, or five if you count the behemoths, and I'm not sure if the behemoths count or not. So that would give us some more CP. I'm not worried about the CP. The CP is nice, but it's not really what I'm after. I just want this mobile energy weapons because honestly, if you try to invade a system that has tanks and all you have is troops, it does not go very well. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, it will not affect these fleets that are out here yet. They do have to make it back to a home system, I believe, to actually swap up who's in their, their military or their infantry. But once we get access to it, we can come in here and we can change the percentage of infantry to armor and that makes a big difference in the ground battles. Uh, one thing we could also consider doing here for a second, because we haven't looked at it yet, is changing our battle tactics up. I'm not sure what all we have available to us, but there may be some better stuff for us that's a little bit closer range. Hmm. Hole plating penetration is not as important to us because we're going primarily energy, so I feel like that's a better option. Take trophies could be useful, uh, but I don't know that it's necessarily that useful. Hmm. I think it could be more useful than... no. Actually, I don't. I think that keeping our basic tactics right now is probably the best option. You guys are fine. Just stay there and keep invading. Just keep sieging, keep doing your damage, you'll be great. Alright, and another 700 essence because we are having no shortage of essence gain right now. Ooh, uh-oh. A brilliant inventor from the Nair system has created a wondrous piece of technology, a neural device that allows one to temporarily control the thoughts and actions of another. Unfortunately, the inventor only created one, and he apparently passed away shortly after testing it for the first time. There is a bit of hullabaloo over what to do with the device now. Uh, so we can increase our military ideology and give 100% extra experience gains to heroes on Nair, or we can get some happiness and destroy it. Now that's actually a really tough decision. Hi, you guys seem cool too. I'm glad you're cordial. We like you. You're cool. Uh, enemy detected in our system. Really? Do you have a death wish? Are you uh, not very intellectually astute? You know what? It's fine. We're not going to worry about them. If they decide to cause trouble, we'll just take them out. Like, we could honestly take them out without any issue here. Although what we might do here, just to make sure that we're kind of a little bit safer. Honestly, our military defenses right now leave something to be desired. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put some basic armor on our behemoth. Along with a beam and potentially a laser. No, we'll just do straight beams. 
The damage from Behemoths is so nice that just doing straight beams here should be fine. Did we get the... No, we didn't get it yet. Soon. Soon we will have the better modules. One turn. Uh, so by doing this upgrade right here, now we could basically get rid of that ship since it's in our space if we'd like. We don't have to, but we totally can. We'll wait. We'll let them run away. If they want to run away, they can run away. Happiness per system we're getting from this guy. What else can we get as a governor? Plus 10 food isn't terrible, but food, as always, for us is kind of one of those things that's eh. We don't really get much growth from it. We just sustain our population. So getting production and food from this is probably a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we have to make that decision on Nair. Do we want more experience or do we want more happiness? So if we come to Nair and we look at what the happiness is going to mean for us, it'll probably take us from content to the next level up, which could be very useful. At the same time, additional XP on our governor will make him very useful as well. Let's look at what his top end skill is and see if we're, we're really trying to rush there. Uh, so yeah, we're not going to gain that much from his top end skill. I mean, getting to this one would make a big difference. But we're also not necessarily... Oh, actually, we are going to kind of be pumping a lot of stuff out here in the next few turns. Okay. In that case, I think it's actually better to take the thing. What are you doing? Okay. To take the happiness bonus. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go... Or I mean to take the governor experience bonus. So we're going to take that. That'll raise our militarist some, which is fine because we're kind of moving that direction anyway. And we already spent his level, I believe, but I'm going to double check just to make sure we don't have one floating. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Vodiani population everywhere. Uh, the Academy Embassy is completed, and now we're working on Denark University in our home system. We should actually switch to Holy Proliferation here, because we managed to proliferate that, proliferate everyone else last turn but our home system. So we'll get to do one, one more system here. Sorry, guys, I'm having a... Bit of a sinus issue this morning. Uh, okay. Go here. Yeah. So we either do Nair or we do Wrath. And I think that Nair is going to be a better option for right now. Although it will slow the gains we have from those, so maybe instead we will do Wrath. We'll do Wrath. Wrath's going to get another population. Nihal should already be doing another pop. Or is it not? It's not. How far is it along, though? Oh, it doesn't actually have the ability yet. So we'll do the level 2 modernization here to get more population slots there. And that'll let us do some more pop on Nihal next turn. Our last political survey comes through, or our latest, and it is religious. That's exactly what we want. <laughs> do we poke it with the behemoth? Hmm. No, nah, we'll leave it alone for right now. We don't want to start a direct war yet because we're still dealing with these pirates. But once they're gone, we will be glad to start a direct war with the Lumeris and smash them off of the galaxy, basically. In the meantime, we'll just happily drain their essence. <laughs> Are you serious? They're all up on Viren now. See, this is a problem. The next arc we build, we're going to send a Viren just to mess with them, I think. Yeah, that's probably the best plan there. We did upgrade this, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. Everybody's got all their arc upgrades. Just making sure, because sometimes I miss stuff. And we're going to end the turn. Our influence is is in need of a boost, for real. The boost to increase the chance the Vonyani population will increase has come to an end. That's okay, we have enough super spuds to boost it again. Oi, that makes such a big, big difference right there. Into your, in your FIDS game. Be the first to explore 50% of the galaxy. I don't know how we didn't get that one with the rate we were exploring the galaxy. You've never heard of him, but a mystical figure, Kalant Alcor, has recently passed away and begun his ascent up the Divine Ladder to another plane of existence. A religious block in your Senate demand that Alcor's passing be given a full state funeral, with a hundred thousand votive candles lit in every city, special monuments constructed that feature his idiosyncratic writings, and three days of empire-wide mourning. It'll be expensive, but Alcor was a popular figure and your population will be grateful. On the other hand, political models suggest that a rejection of the demand will boost scientific literacy even if it is unpopular. After all, much of Alcor's writings concern the truth that worlds are flat, not round. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so do we do we commemorate the flat earther and keep our religious thing growing or do we not? As much as I would like to do this, I'm going to do this because we want to keep our religious up and it'll give us plus 30 influence on systems on our empire, which means our influence is going to go up a lot. We can actually get a third law now, I, I suspect. 
Second Vengeful has probes again. Perfect. Let's go ahead and begin looking at some more stuff on these planets. Check this Baron out next. Ah, here we go. One of your exploratory drones used by your team for rapid planetary assessment has disappeared. According to your lead technician, this type of drone has a particularly low malfunction rate. He thinks it was intentionally sent off course by someone or something. The drone has a cargo bay for collecting samples. Perhaps if you find it, you might discover what happened to it. Two sites look like promising leads. They're both in difficult locations, though, and recovery will be expensive and possibly dangerous. Uh, okay. So, if we explore these, a pirate ship will be spawned on Gemini. Hmm... That's something we're probably going to end up doing because we're here to explore Gemini anyway, so that's fine. We'll just go ahead and sleep that ship for now. I thought Pavo had something we could scan. Apparently it does not anymore, uh, unless we got the last thing that it had, which would make more sense than what I'm thinking, which is that a stealth choir ship already scanned it, potentially. Uh, Yedix still has stuff to scan. I guess we'll send him up to Yedix. Okay, so for this, yeah, that's fine. We we know that you want us to do the things, and we will do them. Yup. Some system, or your system, Sing, has been hacked. Wow, somebody got a hack to our home system. It's probably the pirates right here, though, so I'm not super concerned about it from that regard. However, it may benefit us to get Meek right here, just so that we have something to put some code up and prevent people from hacking our home system. Because uh, that could be the choir, and if it is, that could mean a lot more headaches. Okay, we did our pop boost already. God Eye has received a level up already. He just leveled last turn, by the way, guys. So he's getting a lot of extra experience right now. So we're going to go ahead and take that to get a little bit more production. Do to do. He built one thing this turn, I think. If it, Or he may have just built population. I can't even remember for sure that he didn't build population here. No, he built a building, so that's... He got enough experience from building a building to just level like that instantly. That's really good. Uh, Singh has another population, which is great. Wrath has another population, which is also great. Nihal is ready for more population. And mission flexibility has been completed. Oh, baby, baby, this is great. So that should give us some extra slots here. It does, and it also makes it so that we can get better fids out of that. Look at that, plus 10 FIDs and plus 5% per module. And we have two more module slots we can put those in, so that gives us plus 25% and plus 50 FIDs wherever this economic behemoth is. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the upgrade for that, which is going to cost us quite a bit of dust, but that's okay because it's also going to generate us quite a bit of dust. And we're also going to come in here and make sure that we can't build a second behemoth, because if we can, we'll just stack them right here. I have no qualms with that whatsoever. Uh, gonna go ahead and build the holy or put holy proliferation in queue here so that we can get one more population on our home systems. And very, very soon, two turns, we'll have the tech to get this toxic temperate, and that means it'll basically go to full population as soon as we get it, which is very nice. Uh, I have been told in the, the comments to watch our food and make sure that we don't end up going negative, but so far we seem to be doing absolutely fine on food. Food is almost a non-issue here. Are you for real right now? Y'all are cruising for a bruising. That, that's all I'm gonna say right there. They are actually blockading Nihal right now. They somehow think that this is a good idea on their part. Woe, woe be them when they find out how freaking terrible that idea is. Very soon we're going to be done with everything in the system that we really need, so I'm going to put big data shipyards here so that we can start just pumping out ships. And this is a great system for it. We have all these HOTs that are producing a ton of production. Look at that production right there, guys. That is just juicy, juicy production. 500 production per turn. So let's see how much it would take for us to put out a full fleet. Three, four, five, six, seven. Three turns. Three turns to pump out a full fleet. And that's after we get our big data shipyards and a bunch of other stuff. So probably two turns to pump out a full fleet. Definitely a good idea to be blockading Nihal right now. Definitely a good plan. That's what all the smart people do. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next time. Bye!